Hey, good morning. Welcome to AEI. Great to have you with us. I'm Rick Hess, Director of Education Policy Studies here at AEI. Uh, delighted to uh, welcome you this morning for uh, our conference on getting the most bang for the education buck. Uh, privileged and uh, honored to be doing this in concert with my good friends at the Fordham Institute. Uh, as always, uh, it's a pleasure to work with them, with their talented staff, and uh, just much, uh, I'm much appreciative to Mike Petrilli, the president over at Fordham, uh, and to their whole team uh, for the cooperation in this. Um, this is a follow-up, give or take, to a book that Fordham and I did about 10 years ago uh, called Stretching the School Dollar. At that time, it was in the uh, aftermath, even in the heart of the Great Recession, and the question was, how could school districts stay afloat? This is really a different conversation today. This is how do schools spend dollars intended for our kids in the ways that are going to do the most good for those kids. Now, if you follow this stuff, if you ask the American public, you know there's real concerns about whether we're spending enough money on schools. Uh, the Red for Ed movement, uh, which has been triggered by a number of the teacher strikes across the nation, Chicago may be striking this year, we'll see how that goes, uh, has pushed uh, state legislators in a number of states to look at opportunities to increase funding for schools. Uh, if you look at the Education Next annual polls, you'll see that 50 to 60 percent of Americans say we need to spend more money on K-12. If you look at the Fight Delta Captain annual polls, you'll see that once again, for about the 17th straight year, Americans said the biggest challenge in education is that schools are underfunded. But it's also the case that we actually do spend quite a bit of money on schools. In 2015-2016, the National Center for Ed Statistics reported that we spent a little over $700 billion in the U.S. That's the most recent year for which we have national stats. Uh, that uh, worked out to about $13,800 per pupil, $13,800 per pupil nationally. Uh, that's at the top of the world. It's in the top three easily uh, in terms of international per pupil spending. And we've actually increased per pupil spending since 2015, 2016, by about 4 to 5 percent. Now, even as we spend a lot, arguably, on, uh, on each child, the money's certainly not evenly distributed across the nation or within states. And it's also the case that we're asking schools to do more and more. We're asking schools uh, to offer advanced coursework to more students and in more schools. We're asking them to expand career and technical education. We're asking them to expand early childhood education. And we have also saddled school systems with pretty significant pension and health care obligations. All of this has given risen, all of this <laughs> has tended to lose out, uh, in my experience over the last quarter century, to one of the more frustrating debates in education. Most of you in this room have been part of this conversation about does money matter. I honestly Lee can't think of anywhere else other than education where we actually have that conversation. When you're talking about buying a house, buying a car, feeding your dog, we always assume money matters. More money allows you more options. It allows you to get better stuff. We all get that. The only people who don't get that are, I think, about three or four diehards um, who just have a lot of fun poking the education establishment. But almost everybody else I know who is accused of being a school spending cynic or a school spending critic concedes, of course, money can make a difference for kids, but it matters what you do with it. And on the other side are people who say, by gosh, we need to spend more. We have to spend more. But in almost every case, when I sit down with these people, superintendents, principals, advocates, they'll concede, of course, it matters what we spend it on. If we spend it just hiring more bureaucrats or just increasing benefits for retirees, of course it might not make a difference for kids. Now, there are a couple of trial lawyers and professors who I think like calling for more money just because it's what they do. But what this means is almost everybody in the country and almost everybody in the education conversation understands that more money can obviously help, for ki help kids, but probably what matters at least as much is what are we doing with it? Well, look, the reality is we are asking schools to take on challenges. At the same time, they're in a challenging fiscal environment. 
We can all want schools to have more money because we want them to be able to help kids better. But we also have to understand that however much money is coming in, we can make a bigger difference for kids if we're spending it wisely and well. That's what today is about. So here's how today is going to unfold. There's going to be three panels. The first is a landscape look at where we are and where our K-12 dollars go. The second will be a look at how we can spend K-12 uh, funds more effectively. And the third is going to be a chance to have a conversation uh, with education leaders and policymakers um, on some practical thoughts on how to spend dollars more effectively and some of the political challenges of doing so. If you're on Twitter and you want to follow along or throw questions up to our uh, moderator for the day, the event hashtag is bang for Ed Buck. The event is being live streamed and a full video will be posted afterwards, uh, probably up tomorrow morning for anybody who wants to catch parts or the whole. And uh, the book, uh, tentatively titled uh, More Bang for the Education Buck, uh, will be out with Teachers College Press uh, sometime uh, next summer or fall. With that, I want to turn, uh, turn the mic over to my uh, colleague uh, and partner in this endeavor, who's going to be facilitating uh, the day, uh, Brandon Wright. Brandon is a national editorial director at the Thomas B. Fordham Institute. Uh, his books include Failing Our Brightest Kids, The Global Challenge of Educating High-Ability Students, and Charter Schools at the Crossroads, Predicaments, Paradoxes, Possibilities. With that, let me turn it over to Brandon and ask the first panel to get on up here. <laughs> 